to, to get it started. Um, so what are the, the presenter thing? Um, uh, well, this, shall this topic be continued? Um, is this a topic for a real-time working group or is this a topic for uh, the middleware working group or what do you think? Maybe we start with William. Sure. Um, I think that um, it could be appropriate for either. Um, obviously, it's deeply tied to the middleware. Um, though, at some point, once you decide upon, like, okay, we're either using the wait set or we're using the new kind of like listener API of it, we're working on merging, um, the middleware is on an, a little bit uninvolved after that. Um, and it becomes kind of a new topic that lives sort of in the client libraries. And we, we really never, it was a question that came up at the time when we created the middleware working group. Uh, like what if we have issues that are purely client library related and um, the sort of sit between the user code and the RMW layer. And we really don't have a working group for that. Um, but I think it would be appropriate at the middleware working group or at the, uh, uh, the real time working group, because obviously one of the things that many people who want to, especially people who want to use something other than the executors that are already there or ones like them are people who care about real time and determinism. And, um, but I would say that not everyone who cares about executors, like maybe performance and stuff like that care about real time. Um, but mm -hmm. that being said, like, you know, especially if you're talking about an executor that has like real time properties, like it would be totally appropriate in the real time working group as well. Um, it's kind of a non answer either, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, what do the other think? I, I personally think that uh, we kind of lack uh, um, a working group that takes care of the core of the ROS libraries. The executor is probably the component that is mostly discussed about in, in the last, uh, well, <laughs> since uh, quite a while, I would say. But there are a lot of core concepts in RCL, CPP, RCL, uh, that, uh, yeah, you may stretch them and have them belong in the, in the real-time working group because they are performance-related. Or you may stretch them and have them in the middleware working group. But to me, it really feels like that uh, there should be its own working group that only focuses on the, all these topics in the middle because there are a lot of them, not, not only the executives. I mean, I think that uh, even after we will uh, uh, maybe hopefully come up to some improvements in the executor realm, we will have similar, similar issues. I mean, in the same, uh, that could fit in the same bucket. Yeah, I like this idea, and um, given that, as far as I, I remember, there was also uh, from the participants quite a high overlap between the current real-time working group and the middleware working group, that would be really a possibility to join it and uh, to join it and give it this larger um, this larger umbrella. Also, as let's say we have now a quite robust core, I think um, it's not that there are too many topics to be discussed there, but um, that could be really tackled step by step in such a joint or larger working group. Maybe. I mean, like I said, I think I think what I would do instead is to expand the scope of maybe the middleware working group to include the client libraries. But the real-time working group, I think, has merit on its own, just because there are definitely topics that will matter very much to people who care about real-time uh, and will not matter as much to people who don't. And um, it's not really a scheduling thing so much as a scope thing. But um, I don't know. I think it's okay that there's overlap, big overlap even between certain middleware or cert, sorry, certain working groups. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So the, the first questions from the, from the audience. Um, how does the work on the RCL, RCL CP executors carry over to RCL Pi? And what limitations does Python here. Um, I'll take that one, I guess, too. Um, RCL Pi has executors as well. They're modeled after the RCL CPP ones. 
it was always the intention that things like executors live in the client libraries because uh, things like threading typically are tied very intimately to the language. So, you know, somebody mentioned earlier the, the uh, global interrupt block in Python sets some limitations on what you can do, right? You can't really do a proper multi-threaded executor in Python, right? Um, uh, you know, and if you look at other languages, say like Erlang or something, like they have different kinds of uh, concurrency patterns, right? And you want to take use of those and make use of those. And another good example is that in Python, we have async IO, which is an asynchronous framework. So you can you can tie into that or not, right? Um, so it's just a bit of a, um, I think it's appropriate that each language re-implement some of this. Now, if we come up with like scheduling algorithms or something like that, we could share the logic between them maybe. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's kind of how it works. RCL Pi is a separate entity, but it's modeled after where it can be modeled after uh, C++. So is it maybe like good enough today already? The, the, the RCL Pi executor? It's a good question. They actually have a few different executors in RCL Pi, um, as well as a few different callback group types. Um, I'm not intimately familiar with it. I'd have to go look and see. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, haven't used it extensively, so I'm not sure I can answer if it's like sufficient. Like, I'd have to hear from people who use it, all you know, day in, day out, kind of thing. Is this um, the the listener API? Is this also available for for Python, or would the this be something that has to be added to the to the Python client library then, or I don't believe there's a uh, pull request for Python RCL Pi. Is there or no? Or yeah, Python? you're you're right. There, there is no pull request for Python. I mean, uh, um, the the bulk of the code is uh, either in the RNW or uh, in RCL CPP. Uh, so it would be a matter actually to just implement the hooks uh, in RCL Pi. So I mean, it, it wouldn't be a lot of work. It, it's just a matter of uh, connecting a couple of cap functions. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's doable. It's, it's definitely doable. Yeah, definitely doable. It's slightly complicated by the fact that there's this like trampoline effect that happens. It's the term that's used, and we even have to do this in C plus plus. Like if you give us a, I want to call, I want you to call me this stood function. It might be a lambda, might be a bound function, or whatever. Whenever this uh, subscription has a message, we have to like bounce that through a C function. So we'd have to do the same thing for Python, where you know th there'd be a C C code would be calling a function pointer. That function pointer would have to execute the user's provided Python code, and we'd have to make sure that the context is right, and the globals carry over, and that the gil is respected, and all that stuff. So it might be kind of complicated, but it's definitely doable. Um, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, I think that on this topic, uh, there, there are a lot of features, uh, especially when we talk about performance related features that uh, are specific to RCL CPP. Um, and as far as I know, they, uh, there is at least no real effort at the moment to move them to either to re-implement in Python or to re-implement, to implement them uh, in the common C layer that is, uh, that is below it. I mean, I think that it definitely is related to the fact that uh, the vast majority of users uh, uses the C++ APIs, uh, and maybe also most of the users that uh, have performance issues or per they have perform tight performance requirements uh, are using the C++ APIs. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely not a, a reason for not optimizing the Python one, but uh, it, in the grand scheme of uh, priorities, uh, there may be other uh, things that are more important for Python users uh, than uh, than some some improvement to the to the CPU usage. All right. So the next question: Is it possible to unify the work shown today to produce a comprehensive executor that combines the strength? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah. but not to one, in my opinion. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm so sometimes wondering if it would it be possible to have like one following the the listener approach and one following the the weighted approach, and the what what Alberto presented already has a 
a great flexibility. And um, if if you would have a more efficient weight set and a similar flexibility from the API point of view that you can use um, an existing one, um, but also maybe build your own one. Yeah, I mean, for me, the, the thing that comes down to it is, is the scheduling behavior. Like maybe you could have one that is a base for the others, right? But at the end of the day, like whether or not you're going to like get a call back for every message or you're going to have a triggering, uh, you know, based on one subscription or you're going to have triggering based on a more complicated, um, you know, mechanism uh, or, you know, are your, is your scheduling going to be done by you, the user, or is it going to be handled by the system? If so, which scheduling would you prefer? Like, I think that you know, all of those things, like maybe we could have one executor and all of those things are configurable. So we might have like a hierarchy of classes, but I think we'd still end up with a couple entry points for users, right? Do you want to use the time triggered one? Do you want to use the topic triggered one? Or do you want to use the like, you know, fully dynamic, just call it whenever you get it for every separate subscription method, right? Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of these also have trade-offs like, both it sounded like both the you know um, ring buffer one and the events executor they have their own queuing system, right? And there's a trade-off there with like you know um, for queuing system for events like there's a trade-off there like you've already got a queuing system in the in the DDS layer and now you've got a queuing system separately for events um, and you know there's some some behavioral trade-offs there, uh, which has been the main point of discussion around like. You know why don't we just take the event executor, which clearly got some advantages, and make it the default, and you know get rid of the single threaded, right? Um, and so, for those re like just just for those reasons, like the depending on the user, depending on the use case, like different things are going to have a higher priority, right? And, and like like the RCLC executor talk, right? Like you know the the focus wasn't necessarily on latency performance; it's determinism, right? People are going to have different preferences. Just and that's the same reason that Linux still has different schedulers. Like if you're using a desktop system, you prefer low latency, so the system's responsive, right? Um, but if you're running an autonomous vehicle, that's not what you care about, right? So I think there's always going to be different use cases. That's my opinion, anyways. And so I think we're going to have at least a handful, maybe two or three at the at the least. Well, any more opinions? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Wills brings up a good point. I think there's always going to be different use cases, even like developing applications for an autonomous vehicle, you're probably going to want something with lower latency, just, you know, to quickly develop something on your laptop, and then you'll want an easy way to implement it into a real time system. So it's not even different use cases, it's actually just, you know, developing for a specific use case, you're probably going to want to use something different than when you than when you actually implement it. And to be clear, I don't, I think we should have fewer and we can consolidate and we can have better defaults and things like that. But I still think at the end of the day, we're going to have like, you know, uh, hmm. at least two or three approaches that are valid for different reasons and they'll coexist most likely. Huh? I think it's those three dimensions, the, the principal triggering concept that we've discussed, the integration of the middleware, and that really highly depends on the underlying middleware and its mechanisms, mm -hmm. what can be kept, and that's the third dimension, I think, well separated is the, the mapping to the operating system. Also there, we should keep this, this possibility to use ROS with QNX or, or other RTOS. Um, so any concept like, like presented with PCAS today, that, that ease the configuration should be then a kind of plug in approach tailored for a for an for an for, for sort of an operating system but not fully integrated um, so that you can replace it with other implementations for the authors of your choice. So next next question would be um, yeah um after uh, the overview of all the executors we just had is there a strategy to choose what executor to integrate or not in the main branch of rust 2 in the future and what would be the criteria for the selection 
I guess I'll take that one too. <laughs> um, <laughs> unless somebody else wants to say something. Um, I would say for me, as one of the maintainers of our CLCBP, one of the most important things for the default one is that it preserves good default behavior uh, um, that is similar in behavior, sorry, that is like consistent with the way it worked sort of in ROS1 and that it currently works in ROS2, specifically being, um, you know, one callback per subscription, that, that part has to work well. Like if the answer is we have to um, have the user, we have to change our, our basic, you know, talk or listener examples to add lines of code to it, to add configuration, for me, that would probably be a no-go. Like, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to like promote as an alternative, or maybe an advanced tutorial, explain why you need to do these things, but it should still be the case that you can create a subscription, give it a call back and just say go. And that, that should be, you know, if we can make that more performant or we can make that more deterministic or what have you, then I'm all for that, but it still needs to work and it still needs to, you know, strike the right trade-offs. Um, I think there's some candidates for that, right? Mm -hmm. We can do definitely do better than we, we have today. Yeah, I mean, hopefully eventually we, we will not need to keep integrating new executors, but as, as William said, uh, we will have uh, a couple of good ones that are extensible. Because yeah, I mean, I mean I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that uh, there are so many applications out there and people will want to customize a, such a critical component with their own logic. We, we saw triggering mechanisms, we saw different type of queues or uh, weight sets or very different data structures. Uh, th there should be really customization on all of that. I mean, the, and the event executor provides it for it uh, only on a subset of cases. I mean, it provides a queue like structures. So again, here it, it's not a complete solution. And that uh, I think where we should uh, focus on how to make uh, something highly customizable that, uh, and with a good, with a reasonably good default. So without major, major problems. But I think that the main issue is that it should be customizable because uh, um, at that point, people will be able to improve their own application without having to fork our CLCPP or to patch it. I think this is a, this is a good idea. So the, one of the strengths of ROS is that uh, the default thing is, is super easy. Um, but if you then can also build something more complex, um, yeah, this will be maybe the best solution then. So. Um, interesting question. Uh, will the listener API remove the need for an executor? I mean, by only using the new listener API, the execution of events could just be uh, the, the user's responsibility. Maybe you take this, Alberto. Um, well, in, in theory, yes. Uh, similarly to how the RCL CPP weights that API that, that were implemented uh, recently would allow the user to completely manage the um, how to react to events. Uh, however, I, I think that this is such a important topic and also that is not uh, trivial to solve it, uh, that ROS will always need a default implementation that just works, as you said. Something that something like the current RCLCPP spin uh, that for the, maybe some user, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of users don't even know that there is an executor under the hood because they, they never cared about it. So yeah, the, in theory, it's possible to do everything without executors. So even without the RMW listener APIs, uh, th those will add uh, another way for doing it. But yeah, one executor should always be present at least in my opinion, yeah. and yeah, even well, more, I a couple of them. Yeah, and just to add to that, another thing that I think is worth considering there, and I, I, I omitted this from my talk because though I had it in there originally because I just don't have enough time. I wanted to talk a bit about the difference between the what I perceive to be the purpose of the, the listener API in DDS and the DDS API and what we have for the executor in ROS2. For the executor in ROS2, that's really about, well, one core difference is the user owns the execution threads, right? Like 
Like when you call the single threaded executor, it runs in the thread the user called it in. And the multi-threaded executor, it creates threads, but only when the user constructs one and calls spin on it, right? Um, the DDS listener, and my understanding was one of the purposes was to reduce latency by having the listeners potentially, it's not mandated by the standard, but potentially have them called directly from the thread that does the receives the data over the network. And that allows you to reduce a context switch, right? And that's not really the purpose of the executor. The executor is more about separating business logic from execution uh, so that they can it can be a shared resource. Um, and to that end, if a DDS implementation does call the listener directly, it's up to the user to know uh, that they need to keep that callback short or they might interfere with the working of the, of the communication layer. Whereas the, you know, by default, I think the average ROS user, they do lots of work in their callbacks and, they, and that might cause them trouble and more advanced users may realize that and do something different. But at the end of the day, it's good that you can still receive messages and, you know, have the buffers work if the user has a, you know, kind of long callback and things like that. So I, I think it's a bit of a safer API. Now I have no problem with, us exposing all the way up and uh, the ability for the user to say, actually, you know what, I'm not gonna use an executor or wait set, here's a function, call it when the middleware says it's done, right? Um, and they, if they can, they can deal with the consequences of that. But I think just from a usability standpoint, ease of use thing, like I think the executor probably will stick around, I would guess. Okay. So, uh... Next question, why is the, the real-time scheduling of messages um, using executors more a concern of RCL rather than of RMW implementations? So I'm not sure if the, if the question means that, um, why, why do you care of all this um, real-time topics only in RCL and not, not also in the RMW layer? One thing is, is that DDS, doesn't provide, as far as I'm aware, uh, maybe there's some that have extensions that do this, but the core DDS API for sure, doesn't provide you a way to schedule things across multiple data readers. So if you have data coming in from multiple sources, it's up to you to read or take from them and, and do all of that stuff. Some of what these executors are doing is allowing you to either do that yourself, like you can with DDS, or have some built-in scheduling system that allows it to organize that for you. Like the event executor, like one of the things that people wanted to do was like, since we take, okay, we got one message from here, two messages from here, and three messages from here, I can put them together. I can look at them together and figure out which to take first, right? Maybe by even looking into the message, doing more sophisticated, maybe, oh, I'll take these two because they're matching pair and ignore the others for now. Like you can do more sophisticated, matching and scheduling across data streams. Um, and so those kinds of things are not done. There, there's no middlewares out there that I'm aware of that do that kind of thing for you at the moment, um, and including DDS. And so, uh, and it makes sense. I mean, that's a very user space oriented problem that needs to be solved. And what we have in ROS is somewhat robot specific and somewhat like just helping you do that stuff. I think that's the way I see it at least. All right. Does any of the presenters have um, a question to discuss? I have one actually. Uh, what are the plans for the, uh, maybe it was answered, uh, sorry, but I didn't realize, the reference system. Uh, what are the plans for this? Is going to keep it alive? Keep it as a benchmark for everyone, uh, a standard benchmark. Are there any plans for this? No. Yeah. So we, we definitely want to um, continue there um, and yeah, keep it also up to date. So like if, if, if there would be a new Humble release, then um, yeah, update it to, to also work with, with Humble. Um, there's already the, the pull request from, from Ralph for integrating uh, the callback group level executor. Um, and I think if, um, the events executor will be will be merged to to uh, to rolling or master the, um, the, um, and, and humble. Then we can also have uh, an, a main that um, or a configuration that's using the events executor. And so we then have have more and more um, executors that are uh, yeah, integrated 
already and it's already possible now to to have different RMWs, so you could also to use it to play around with with RMWs. Yeah, so definitely something that we will continue and and everyone is yeah welcome to to also contribute. Oh uh, yeah, and just a quick comment on that too. Uh, I tried to touch on it during my my talk, but um, so the reference system that we implemented today is this AutoWare reference system. It's based on the AutoWare Auto project, um, but the way we wrote the reference system uh, package is it's actually essentially can be developed for a different reference system, right? So the the base node types could be made into any sort of reference system that you'd like to test. Uh, so yeah. We, we'd kind of open that up. It's, it's open source. So for the community to, to check out, uh, maybe implement their own reference system um, or even, um, you know, implement or test their own executor if, if other people have executors as well um, that weren't presented here. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. All right. And maybe I uh, I also want to share my view. I mean, the, I have uh, found it really great that we have all these presentations today about the different executors, and a little hands on. And uh, uh, but my main main question would be how how we can uh, go on uh, in in terms of consolidating. And um, we don't have to decide it right now. But I think um, at least from you know if you want to make ROS uh, uh, in, into a product. Uh, uh, features like uh, you know setting real-time priorities, or you know um, coordinating the the priorities uh, over multiple um, nodes with the PICAS uh, approach with the trigger. And I mean there there are a couple of features that are not mandatory, which could be optional, right? I mean you could have a default executor which just uses default priorities or no trigger or something like this, but um, I would like to, let's say, open the discussion how we could get into, uh, let's say, um, maybe a working mode or how we could, how a process could look like, you know, how to integrate or different, how to, how to integrate now these different uh, ideas into somehow maybe two or three different executors that serve different um, purposes and that could be either, you know, in this or that working group, but it's, um, you know, it would be um, a hope that this um, executor workshop kind of um, drives a little bit of the momentum and and then get things done and that that not, let's say, in one year again, we we hear again and say, oh, we have another, because you see lots of, lots of um, activities is going on in the research world and also in different companies and everyone is trying to write its own executor because the current one is not really feeding, you know, it's not really um, um, serving, serving its best. And you see most of it, I mean, many things are already there, right? And with the callback group level executor, you can set the priorities and, and, and uh, many things are already there, but maybe they need a, a better API or um, need to be somewhat better integrated or something like this and would be nice to let's say share resources and get things together and somehow get into a working working mode and how to how we can proceed further yeah. so sh should we put this on the agenda of, of, of one of the next um, middleware working group meetings and yeah, create like something like a, an executor interest group. <laughs> um, but I also see that uh, there are some topics like the weight set um, where many people are, are working on and um, they can combine ideas and uh, Im Im improve the, the status quo in, in ROS2. Yeah, where, where should we kick it off in maybe in, in the, the middle of working group? Makes sense, so. All right. So, time is up. Um, our thanks to to all the presenters. Um, really great that you that you all joined. Um, that you all prepared the 
not only the slides, but also yeah, integrated your, your work in, in the reference system. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for this. Thanks for, for all the participants. Um, yeah, so let's see that uh, the topic will continue um, and let's improve the executors in Rust too. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you, Michael, and to Evan for the reference system. Great. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.